everyone, it's Vanessa. It's currently October 21st, which means it's going to be nonfiction November very, very soon. And I thought I would sit down and talk to you about some of the nonfiction things that are on my radar for the month. I feel like so far October has been very nonfiction heavy, so there might be some fiction in November, but I do expect that I'm going to read plenty of nonfiction in nonfiction November. First, I wanted to talk about the things that I'm currently reading that probably will get done before nonfiction November starts, but are still the nonfiction things that I'm currently thinking about. One of that I mentioned in my last video and it's Know My Name by Chanel Miller. I am currently almost halfway through this book and I've been reading it very slowly just because I'm not listening to it on audiobook. I literally have to sit down and read the book. This is so beautiful and I've taken pictures of parts of the book that I really love. I think her writing is really really beautiful. I feel like sometimes people force metaphors and like similes and like poetic writing and when I'm reading this book it doesn't come across like that at all. It comes across very genuine and very natural. Natural. So it's beautifully written, but also it's just uh, powerful to me and it's inspiring and I am loving it. So that's a very good one. I feel like it's going to be five stars. Another book that I feel like it's going to be five stars so far is The Only Plane in the Sky. Uh, an Oral History of 9-11 by Garrett M. Graff. I am 40% of the way through this one. It's a very long audiobook, like 15 hours long, but yesterday I read like five hours and today so far I've already read an hour and a half. It's so good. It's so compelling. It literally, I, you have a reaction to what you're listening to. I have cried. I have made like faces reading it because it is just so painful, but also very gripping. And there's stories in it that I do recognize and they're kind of like lore of 9-11 that you just know about. But then there's also lots of other little stories that I love how the author is kind of putting together and weaving into the story, the, the threads of it. And the audiobook is also fantastic because it has more than 45 voices. It has like actual recording from the cockpit and the black boxes. Um, so it's very, very good and very painful to read, but good. Now let's move on to my pile of books that I've been grabbing at the library. Um, every time I think, oh, this might be good for nonfiction November, I've been kind of piling them on and then bringing them home. So let's go through, maybe let's go through books that are not new and then I'll go through the new books that I found. So one book that I really want to read is one that I've heard a lot about on booktube and it's why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. Um, this is from a the perspective of a UK based person of color and they are giving us their thoughts about race. I've read a lot of books about race. The one that I most recently read that kind of disappointed me was White Fragility so I'm hoping that this one is better. And also from the perspective of, of a non-American look on race because I don't really know much about race relations in the United Kingdom or Europe in general. So that shall be good. I also have The Battle for Room 314. This is My Year of Hope and Despair in a New York City High School by Ed Boland. It's from the perspective of a nonprofit executive that decides I'm going to go be a teacher and then realizes the adversity that these kids that he's teaching are really going through and how the educational system is really failing them in this public high school in New York City. I love reading books about the educational system um, in America. I loved Reading with Patrick was a book that was about the education system that I really, really loved. Um, and I just, I love hearing the perspective of teachers and realizing like what they're up against when it comes to students who are facing a lot of issues outside of the school system and that's affecting their learning. So this looks to be good. And one more non-new book that I want to read is one of the Sarah Scribbles collections. I've never read them from cover to cover like in a collection. I've seen them plenty on the internet but I think this will be a lighter thing to read during nonfiction November so I have this set aside for that and I'm hoping these make me laugh. Let's talk about new books. I have so many of them. Um, one book that you've heard me talk about because I had it on audiobook and then I just didn't have enough time to read it so I got it in physical copy is The Truffle Underground, A Tale of Mystery, Mayhem, and Manipulation in the Shadowy Market of the World's Most Expensive Fungus. So it's all about the truffle industry and kind of 
how people steal it and try to harvest it and sell it and it's very expensive and fancy. Um, this is by Ryan Jacobs. I honestly don't know much more than that. I know this is very much recommended to people who enjoy reading true crime so that's why it's on my list. Maybe I'll go back on hold for the audiobook version of it but it's a pretty short book. It's like 200 pages so that's another one. I saw this one. Um, Rebecca Tracer blurbed it on the top. Um, this is C. Jane Wynn, The Inspiring Story of the Women Changing American Politics by Caitlin Muscatello. I'm thinking this is going to be like that Netflix documentary following like the different women candidates after I feel like it's 2018 and one of them was Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. Um, I feel like that's going to be that but uh, what is it called? Knocking down the house or something like that? Knock down the house? Um, I feel like it's gonna be that but in book form but we'll see it looks like it follows four different women and ooh, it takes them inside winning campaigns so it seems like they all win <laughs> so that might be nice but it's gonna look at the realities of running while being female I also have um, no visible bruises by Rachel Louise Snyder. This is what we don't know about domestic violence can kill us. And I've heard a lot of good things about this book. I wish it was available on audiobook, but I got the physical copy explaining what domestic or intimate partner violence is and how prevalent it is in our society and the effects of that on our society. It's supposed to look at victims and perpetrators and law enforcement, kind of like the whole system that works around this. And I think this is just like good reading to think about people who commit like mass violence as well because it usually starts as domestic violence. Um, so that is another book that's on my radar for nonfiction November. A book that might be good, might not be good, I'm not sure yet, is a collection of writings, poetry, essays, and it is called Indelible in the Hippocampus, Writings from the Me Too Movement, edited by Shelley Oria. And it's a tiny little book, and inside there's just poetry, stories, writing, having to do with Me Too. It takes the title Indelible in the Hi Hippocampus from Christine Blasey Ford from the Brett Kavanaugh hearing one thing that she said in those hearings indelible in the hippocampus was the laughter. I don't know if this will be great especially because sometimes it's difficult for me to enjoy poetry. It could be good. So here it is. It's another option. I'm so excited for a new Sadie Doyle book. This is Dead Blondes and Bad Mothers, Monstrosity, Patriarchy, and the Fear of Female Power. She wrote Trainwreck which was a book I really enjoyed a couple years ago and it took a look at Trainwreck the idea of a train wreck in our society and then looked at historical and present day um, iterations of the train wreck and basically kind of dismantled the train wreck as like an idea. Like being a train wreck is not a bad thing is kind of what she was getting at. Especially because it talked a lot about pop stars that I really enjoy that have been classified as train wrecks and I just I'm here rooting for all of them. <laughs> um, this one is supposed to take a look at monsters and demons and how we pin women into these kind of categories. So instead of train wrecks looking into like demons and monsters and doing the same thing looking at historical examples and present day examples is what it's kind of Sounded like it asks women to look to monsters for the ferocity we all need to survive. I'm excited for this one. Again, wish it was an audiobook. I listened to Trainwreck on audiobook and I really liked it, but this one is not available that I have been able to see so far. Last but not least, the most anticipated. It has so many people on hold waiting for it. I don't. I need to read it like now because I feel like it's gonna take me some time. It is Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrell. This is his brand new book about basically the conspiracy to stop publishing stories taking down powerful people who have done bad things. For example, NBC News tried to kill a lot of his stories about Harvey Weinstein and um, lots of other publications have sort of done these same things of kind of like stopping reporters from taking it to the next level because they fear the repercussions of powerful people being mad that these stories are being run. I've heard the audiobook is not great and that Ronan Farrow narrates it and puts on his own voices and I listened to some clips of examples of that. He like has his own like exasperated dad voice. He has his own like Donald Trump voice. Um, he has like accents that he's doing. So that is not necessarily super appealing to me. So I think the best way is that I'm, I'm going to read this so I don't have to listen to these horrible accents and voices that he's putting on in the audiobook. But yeah, I'm excited for this one as well. 
So that is all that I have so far. I have a couple things on hold and we'll see if they come in on time. So that's it for me and Nonfiction November. I hope that you're excited for the month. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you're participating. I need to watch so many more videos. I've only watched a few so far. And if you're curious about any of these books or if you've read any of these, please let me know in the comments as well. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. And did you see Sam behind me? He's sleeping right there. He's sleeping. He's tired.